Here's a quick demonstration on how Toyota TechStream software works on my Lexus ES330. Toyota TechStream is a software that dealerships use in order to diagnose your vehicle. You can also use it to personalize settings, program keys, remotes, as well as change window, door lock, and lighting settings. In order to connect your car to the computer, you're going to need a mini VCI cable. This is just a cheap one off eBay I got for about $25. It's got an OBD connector on one side and a USB connection on the other side. And that enables the computer to think that there's a COM port to communicate to. First I'm going to connect the mini VCI cable under the dashboard to the OBD port on the car. Then I'm going to turn the ignition to the on position. After installing the drivers that came with the cable, I've also installed TechStream 8. I'm going to click connect to vehicle and my vehicle is automatically scanned. You can see the VIN and also the engine size there. I'm going to click next. Here's the home screen of the TechStream software. It allows you to connect to the ECUs in the car. The funnest part of TechStream is the customized setting menu. Inside the customized function menu we've got settings for door locks, windows, the dome light, headlights, as well as wireless door lock and security. Now if I go ahead and open up the wireless door lock, as you can see under the customized parameters we've got the first three here are for the beeper when you click the remote. And we also got trunk lid operation as well as the auto relocking time. The most important operation here is the unlock two operation, which allows you to open the, all doors on the vehicle with two clicks of the remote. I'm going to turn that feature off and then click save, click next, and it'll download that information to the computer. To check the changes to the power door lock operation, I'm going to click unlock on the remote once and all of the doors should unlock. Then I'm going to head over to the door lock operation. As you can see in the lock menu, We've got the options to change the lock when you shift out of park or when you reach a certain speed as well as the number of times you turn the key to unlock all the doors on the driver's door. The menu that I'm after here is the unlock when you go into park. A lot of times my passengers get trapped inside of the car because they don't unlock when I shift into park. So I'm going to change that to on and then save the menu. It'll download that into the computer. So now when I shift out of park, the doors lock. And when I shift back into park, the doors unlock so my passengers at the back don't get locked in. I'm going to go into the power window menu here. And there are two options here that allow you to roll down the window when you turn and hold the key in the driver's door, as well as press and hold unlock on the transmitter. This is the option for when I press and hold the unlock button, the windows and sunroof roll down. I'm going to go into illuminated entry which controls the dome light and inside this menu we've got an option to illuminate the dome light when you turn off the car and take the key out of the ignition. I'm going to turn that on. We can also control the dome light and the lighting time. I'm going to save this and download that to the computer. And now when I turn off my key the dome light will now illuminate. Next I'm going to go into lighting control. Here I can control the function of the headlights. So this is for the auto off function when you close all the doors and lock them how long the headlights will stay on. I'm going to change that to 30 seconds. We can also control the sensitivity and response time of the automatic headlights and disable the daytime running lights. I'm going to save these options to the computer and download them. So now if I close the door with the headlights on, 30 seconds later the lights cut off. Next I'm going to go over to the security tab and here you can see I've got this thing called passive mode. That's to enable the security system. I'm going to turn that on. Warning by horn as well as a delay entry time before the security system activates. To check that the security system works. I've locked the system for more than 30 seconds, so it's active. If I open this thumb lock here, the alarm should sound. And I can use the thumb lock button to disable the alarm. Now normally, if your car has automatic wipers as well as smart key, you would access those from here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the engine and ECT. And this here is where any codes will pop up. You'll see the check engine light is currently off. You can also view monitors. And once you're in this menu, you can see that all the monitors are complete and everything's passed. That means you should be able to pass an OBD emission step. Also under engine and ECT, we can click data list and get live data from the ECU for things like voltage readouts, temperature, as well as the throttle position and other things. If you click active tests, we can run diagnostic tests on various parameters such as the variable valve timing, the AC or the fuel pump. Moving on to the ABS ECU, we can see again we can read trouble codes for the ABS and traction control. Again on the left, we can click data list to read current values from the ABS motor and active tests to perform tests on the ABS solenoids and relays. I'm going to click utility and I can get options like air bleeding, signal check, as well as resetting the memory and the test mode. Next I'm going to move over to the immobilizer tab. Now if you click utility, it brings up this menu here where you can reset the codes, erase transponders, as well as register new keys. Now if you do have a brand new key that you want to register on the car, 
you follow this tutorial and it will tell you the instructions on how to add it. Next I'm going to go over to the TIF deterrent tab and here if I click on data list I can see the current parameters for the different switches in the security system. Next I'm going to go over to the airbag tab. This is one of the advantages of having TechStream software over an OBD2 reader. I can read airbag codes. As you can see I've got a seat airbag indicator error here and if I click summary it tells me that it's currently not active. Now there's this button at the bottom here that allows me to clear codes. As you can see a menu pops up warning me that I'm going to be clearing all the codes in the system. I can click clear and it will clear all the diagnostic codes. Now one more menu that might be interesting is the driver's door menu. If you click on data list here it will list all the parameters for the switches and the positions of the glass. So if you're having trouble with your power windows this is a good diagnostic to tell what's going on. Overall I can say that the TechStream software as well as the cable is definitely worth the 25 bucks. It's really good for do-it-yourselfers and people who want to customize settings on their car without paying hundreds at the dealership.